Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to revisit Patrick Bet David from the channel Valuetainment. Today he's talking about game over, what Muslims and Christians have in common. I said this multiple times before. Christians nowadays like to focus on the theological argument. Oh, the bad Muslims do not believe that Jesus is God. Oh, they do not want to prescribe to a trinity. This is why we are enemies. This couldn't be further from the truth. The real enemy is modernity. This zeitgeist that is trying to destroy every traditional value. This zeitgeist that is attacking Christianity and Islam alike. Like. Don't you see this? We have a common enemy. Christians and Muslims should ally and fight together against this degeneracy. However, they've been played against each other. Who is this mysterious background player that is playing those guys against each other? I'm truly wondering here. Nevertheless, fact of the matter is, of course, that this is a scam. Traditionally, religious people have to unite in this day and age and fight together side by side. Anyways, with no further ado, let's see what Patrick David has to say. When you look at the Muslim community, and you know what percentage of Muslims vote uh, liberal? Do you know what percentage Probably of Muslims 80%. vote? 70 plus percent vote what? liberal. But by, by the way, here's the data wow. for you. Very interesting. This is something for you to be considering within Turning Point USA to think about. Check this out. Midterms. Do you know from 2018 midterms to 2022 midterms? Watch this. 2018 midterms to 2022 midterms, specifically Muslims. Okay. 20. 18 midterms, only 17% voted Republican. Let me say it again. 2018 midterms, only 17% voted Republican. Do you know what it was in 2022? 28%. Oh, wow. Guys, that's 11% 11 in four that, years. That, Here's what is happening. That's, that, per, that's profound. That's profound. Here's what's happening. By the way, we'll send you that data. Here's what's happening, which is exciting. This is what I love that's happened that's exciting, which is kind of awkward. It's very awkward, very weird, but it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay. What would happen to liberals? You ready for this one? Mm -hmm. By the way, we know why Muslims don't vote conservative because conservatives are pro-Israel. So that's kind of like something that stems with them. So they kind of like... There you go. But in every issue, abortion. Muslims have... What is conservative about supporting Israel? I wonder. Lowest percentage of divorces. Lowest percentage of divorces. How they feel about abortion. How they feel about LGBTQ. All of that stuff. Muslims have a conservative belief. But Democrats have won over the Muslim vote as well as the black vote because of you know, certain positions, right? Politics are so extremely boring to me. As Muslims, we believe in Islam. We have a Sharia, a law. This is what we subscribe to. The politics, on the other hand, might agree with certain aspects of Islam. Conservatism might agree with certain percentages of the Sharia. However, it is not the full law and therefore Patrick is confusing it here. It's not Muslims that are subscribing to conservative ideas. Certain conservative ideas are agreeing with Islam. And this is why you see Muslims then in turn agreeing with them, tolerating them. However, as true Muslims, we're not looking up to conservative politicians or liberal politicians. We do not care for that whatsoever. A true Muslim wants the caliphate. A true Muslim wants Sharia. What if conservatives are able to win black liberals? And what if conservatives are able to win Muslims? And what if Muslims and Christians come together and say, look, let's set aside Prophet Muhammad and Jesus. Mm -hmm. We know what you believe in. We know what we believe in. But listen, when it comes onto these issues with family, let's unite. Do you know I agree. how scary it would be if a Republican strategist behind closed doors brought the 10 biggest influencers and said, we have to make a better argument to Muslims because Republicans have always been what? No, 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 stiff arm to Muslims. No, 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 stiff arm to Muslims. There's a lot of Muslims that are waiting to convert to Republican. Republicans are not doing a good job winning them over. The argument convert makes you. sense for Muslims to be Republican, but Republicans are doing a terrible job winning their vote. So all I'm saying to you is when we're talking about, you know, this thing's going to get worse, this thing's going to get worse, I think... You're Realistically speaking, Muslims are just 1% of the American population. This is probably why politicians do not really care for the vote. Is your argument better yeah. to convert? And if we do, I think well, common sense is going to eventually prevail. Yeah, and I, I'm obviously not a Muslim. <laughs> but um, I will say this. I would much rather work with a Muslim parent association than an LGBTQ organization on the right. Oh, really? And the opposite <laughs> is actually happening. People on the right he says are trying to go out of their way to go try to make peace with wow. the gay mafia. And I think the opposite. It's like, well, no, go to people that actually share some of your values, theological differences aside. You saw in Dearborn, Michigan, 
the parents that were rising up against the grooming sexual per perversion of children were Muslim families. Mm -hmm. And you see this with Latinos. You see this, again, with blacks and Muslims. So here, here's what you're getting at, yeah, Patrick. Just the whites that are being deep, cucked for whatever reason. Completely, which is that this woke virus, as we call it, right? These woke idea pathogens, they are, they are only popular in white upper middle class college yeah, educated makes you really coastal communities and yet they are being almost colonistically imposed on the rest of the country i agree man. so midwestern christians don't want the woke thing but what, what there is a thermonuclear this is why i stopped subscribing to nationalism neo-nationalism and uh, like i grew up in germany my parents are from the balkan i grew up christian and i had nationalistic ideas i was subscribing to right-wing ideologies i thought that nationalism will save us all ethnocentric nationalism is the cure for the world we have to stick to our own kind this is truly what i believe but then i opened up my eyes and i saw how delusional those movements are it is nothing but skin worship we are the white race we are better than everybody else how is that so when you look at the current state of affairs around the world you will see that white people are being duped into all kinds of degeneracy into all kinds of filth if you look into those neo-nationalistic movements you will see white people blaming the blacks blaming hispanics blaming the jews blaming everybody around them not realizing that they are the issue themselves totally forgetting about the colonial past of course but now not recognizing that they're destroying their own societies with this woke agenda as he likes to call it. They're destroying their own society with all kinds of filth and now they're spreading it across the globe. And instead of realizing that they are the issue, instead of realizing that the West is the issue, that America is the enemy here at hand, no, they're going to point the finger and say, ooh, it's the Muslims' fault, ooh, it's the blacks, we need an ethno state. You created those problems. A weapon that's about to be deployed where you can exploit how white liberal ideas are being forced to black youth, Hispanic youth, Absolutely, and man. Muslim youth. There that you has go. not been exploited. And we're seeing it in the polling. We're seeing it where the Yale, Harvard, white... And even if you take the stance, because many neo-nationalists take the stance that it does not come from the whites, but it comes from you-know-who, even then, man, you've been duped and you fell for those ideas. East side liberals in New York who all agree that the trans thing is the greatest thing ever they all want this but you know where it's unpopular people that still have an attachment to the customs and the traditions of their home country absolutely that have not yet been infected by the yale zeitgeist of the chemical castration of children and by by the way guys let me tell you i'm telling you right now this is going to sound weird if republicans win the Muslim vote and the black liberal vote, it's game over for a few decades. And it's not possible. Americans are so obsessed with politics, so. man. The presentation. They really believe politicians are their savior. Of course, what else do you expect? Because America is already secularized, just as the rest of this planet. Christianity led to secularism. You separated the church and the state. And now you're looking up to your politicians as if they are the archbishop, as if they are the pope. As Muslims, yet again, yes, Islam is an evangelizing religion. Ultimately, we would like everybody to accept Islam. Of course, in a perfect world, that would be amazing. Everybody would accept Islam. However, in a perfect Islamic world, we wouldn't look up to the politicians. We would look up to the Khalifa. As Muslims, we have a totally different goal in mind. We are not compatible with this liberalism, conservatism, call it what you will. You're playing those two sides against each other. We are neither nor as Muslims. We are just Muslims. It has to be better by purely they don't presenting get it. logic. Go back to the well, Gallup data and then I want hear your thoughts go back on the gallup data control F and that's why ideally really muslims have to do hijra and leave those countries show it so i want Honestly. the audience to see exactly leave them control F the word born okay you found it is this it okay is this yeah that's all right so watch this in your view of being gay or lesbian something you're born with or due to factors as upbringing and environment look at this Nine, this is 2019 is as far as it goes what does it say born with 49 percent go all the way to the bottom that says uh in 1977, 13%, okay? It, how did this happen? This is the constant 
trying to baptize people to think this is normal, and they're able to go to the youngest generation. There's two data points with traditionalists. There's one that says 1.7% of them are gay. There's another one that says 0.8% of them are gay. If there's one thing we know about traditionalists, they could give a shit about our opinion. So they're not going to be like not coming out of closet because they're worried about what you and I think about it. They're going to do whatever the hell they want to do. And then with, with these two guys, two communities, imagine all of a sudden a liberal has to defend a Muslim with pure values. No, this, and, but you see, you see Elon <laughs> Omar possible. tap dance around this whenever she gets asked questions about this trans stuff, or of Rashida Talib, who are the two most outspoken Muslim members of Congress. Interestingly Muslim. enough, there was a Muslim attorney general candidate who lost by 240 votes in Arizona, my home state, Abe Hamaday, who should have been attorney general. Uh, and there is a sizable Muslim population in Arizona, and he was really clear on all the major issues. And so just to kind of reemphasize the point here, here's understandably, and Pat, you'll have to meet kind of the right halfway. There's an understandable fear that that American Muslims have animosity towards American Christians and vice versa. OK, there is some truth to that in the very radical Islamic sure, circles. OK, sure. maybe in the very radical Islamic circles. Sure. But this is a common belief amongst Christians talking about politics which they by think Muslims are the enemy. is the sport of addition and multiplication, not division and subtraction. So if you want to multiply your ranks, you have a community of people that you don't agree with theologically sure. that are currently a devoted Democrat voting group. Wouldn't it make sense to then just focus on two issues that pro-life trans, pro-life trans, pro-life trans. Muslims are 99% in agreement. Why, why? So so say, why is there that well, I, division between the two? It's, so what, Some what, of it is, is a... Is a Unders is a theological, and I share some of this, right, belief that radical Muslims want to bring Sharia to the United States. Okay. That, and I'm not saying I even believe that, you know, wholeheartedly. That, that but is, that is not a radical belief whatsoever. Any true Muslim would love to live under Sharia, just as any true Christian would love to live in a society that is obeying the Bible. Doesn't this make sense to you? Any true Christian would love to live in a truly Christian society. Now, sure, Christians already accepted secularization, and therefore they are obeying by the laws of the land, the American Constitution. Muslims have to obey the law of the land as well, and as long as they are a minority, they will accept those laws. However, complete transparency here. If the majority of America would be Muslim, of course, those Muslims would love to live under Sharia. This is what it is. A lot of Christians. It's very simple. It's not a radical Secondly, belief. Post 9-11, there was a fair amount of nonprofit chatter and a fair amount of activism that presented Islam with no nuance. No, sure. no nuance in the sense of that all Muslims believe the same thing. And that's, I don't think, a fair representation, right? There's radical Muslims. No, not all Muslims believe the same thing. However, there is only one Islam. Right? There's radical Muslims. There's people that take it, you know, I have a very good friend, Zudi Jasser in Arizona, who is calling for a reformation, right? But here's the point. We are calling for a reformation is going against Islam. And of course, Christians would agree with this because they want to reform Christianity over and over again and have done so in the past. Until now, you don't really have any Christianity left. Now you're living under a liberal society. Even if you want to call it conservative, Republican or whatnot, it's all a scam, man. It's all the same. If you look at the values of those conservatives, they are shifting every decade or so. And in the future, you will see those conservatives advocating for the same things that the liberals are advocating for today. Islam is never changing. And therefore, if you want to reform Islam, if you want to change the religion of Islam, then you're not a Muslim anymore. This has nothing to do with tolerance, with acceptance. This is a liberal worldview already that you're imposing onto the religion of Islam. We are proud that Islam is never changing. Islam has been revealed. Islam has been established. And it will never change, just as the pattern of Allah is never changing. Changing. Is that what I would challenge Republicans or so conservatives weak. with? Is Why like, would okay, it change now? Let's pretend you think that Muslims want an authoritarian regime. You're already living under one. <laughs> You're living under a trans authoritarian regime. And here's a group yes, of people I that want to smash that, that well. regime. Wouldn't it be nice to build a coalition for once? So, so let me tell you. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm about to get a little uncomfortable with the audience, and they may or may not like it, but that's my comfort zone, okay? <laughs> so we're in Bahamas last week. We're having dinner. We're laughing our asses off mm -hmm. for about three hours. Guy sitting across from me is the same guy that I went to him to ask for the Quran that I gifted to Tate at the end. If you watch the interview with Tate at the end, I didn't, I gave get, him I, a, I didn't get that far. Yeah, yeah. But, but if you just go to the last okay. two minutes, that's all you need to do. I gave him a Quran. 
I gave him a Bible from 1870, wow. and I gave him Mere Christianity by, by C.S. Lewis. My favorite book. I'm like, listen, here's three books. One of them is an old Bible. One of them is C.S. Lewis. Hopefully, you read C.S. Lewis. You know, do your thing. He loved them, by the yeah, way. Yeah, by the way, he he if you see it, the guy doesn't get emotional. You could tell he got yeah. emotional when this he gift was given it. to him. And obviously, we. It's kind of funny, though. Don't read the Bible. Read the book of C.S. Lewis. Uh, uh, we we have. That will do Tom, the trick. I love the fact that Tucker did the interview with him, and he went to Romania. And whether we were the guinea pigs to realize that you can make it back to America to Tucker, yeah. it is all good. You yeah. know, we're glad we did that. Different but this is not Rob. the one. Don't worry about it, Rob. It's, it's fine. It's it's a newer one. That's the older one. But here's 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 what happened there. When we talk to this guy, Haas, stud, love him, Amazing. love his wife, Naveen, good people. So he starts talking about Muslims, America, Israel, Republican, Christians, and this guy is a hardcore conservative. Yeah. Maybe more a hardcore conservative than a Muslim. And that's saying something because he right. is a Muslim and a proud one. And he's the kind that converts. He's not a kind that just talks about it. So he's the kind that converts, and he converts Christians. And we, I think the number was shown on how many... I, of course, hope that it's not true what he's saying here. However, just a little clarification. As Muslims, we are Muslims first. Anything else comes second. First, we're Muslims, and then you might be a basketball player. You might be a businessman, what have you. It doesn't matter. First and foremost, you are a Muslim. And therefore, if you're voting conservative, that's what you do. You're voting conservative, but you're not a conservative. You are a Muslim. Americans and have converted to Muslim. The number's like 20,000 Christians. Of That's which 75% are women that have. 25% are men. Okay, and a lot of them are blacks, by the way, that, that are converting. And that's been the case since the 60s. That's been mm -hmm. the case since the 60s. Shorabs, Abi, Ali, we, we Tyson, all this. Yeah. We did. Yeah. But, but he, here's, here's where it went. I said, and he said, well, you know, the, the challenges that Muslims, you know, they're being identified stereotypes with, uh, you know, being uh, 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 terrorists and violent. Okay, no problem. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, are all stereotypes correct or incorrect? Are they partially correct? He says, well, Pat. I said, let me just kind of give you some stuff here. So you ready? He says, yes. I said, the Armenian. I said, I'm Armenian. I'm half Armenian, half Assyrian. I said, do you realize AIG flew out to my house to drop my contract because I was Armenian because the guy talked to my wife and said, Armenians are known for insurance fraud. <laughs> and we're worried that, Patrick, the same thing's going to happen. It's unbelievable. The same guy that came with the lawyer to terminate me, seven years later at his retirement on a yacht, he had five speakers to speak in front of his entire friends and family. The last one that spoke was his best friend. The second to the last one was me. Wow. That spoke at, we are great friends today. Mutual respect, like you would have been. I love this guy. I can say that, right? I said, okay, what are um, Asians known for? And we're in the room. We're just asking everybody because there's a Filipino. It's, oh, well, you know. Driving, okay. Jews, okay. Stereotype. You really want to say this? Money. Cheap money, okay. Hey, blacks, you know, black on black crime, you know, fatherless homes, okay. You know, we kept going. Everything, Indian, 7 Eleven, you know, <laughs> gas stations, literally everybody. And it was all nationalities, so it was comfortable to say because you're making fun of yourself. You're being self deprecating. Sure. I said, when's the last time you heard about a black terrorist? He says, what do you mean? I said, have you ever heard about the stereotype, a black terrorist? No. He's like, no. I said, why is there, you know, Middle East Muslim terrorists? Why is that connotation there? So, well, you know, it's because there's so much anger of what the West has done to this, to this. Okay, you go look at the top 10 countries in the world for the last 50 years. This data is out there. If you look at the top 10 countries in the world who has the most, you know, terrorist attacks, violent attacks against each other. Eight out of ten is Muslim. Of course. So now they're going to sit there and say, see, I knew you were against me. I knew you were against this. No problem. No, no. Hear me out. Now let's flip it on them. I agree with this. for the other side? That Muslims Stereotypes like do have uh, I was partial born in truth. Iran. Absolutely. Ten years I lived in Iran. You know what the West did to Middle Eastern countries before the Ottoman Empire fell in whatever, 1916, 1917, 1918, when the Ottoman Empire fell? And all of these countries were part of theirs. And then all of a sudden, hey. You know, we're going to regulate these guys, Palestine and this, and we're going to, France and Britain, they're going to have these countries that are going to, you know, regulate. Hey, uh, Iran, you guys don't know how to manage oil. We'll take care of your oil. Yeah. Look, these people are dumb. Let's just take care of their money, their, their oil, right? The, the British oil company. Yeah, so yeah. guess what? These guys are saying, no, 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 no. Listen, stop trying to take our money. You keep ruining our country by creating so many proxy wars and havoc. Muslims have a good point there. And then there's a Trust. statistic that came out showing the, uh, the angriest people in the world. Do you know the angriest people in the world? You can pull up the statistics, Rob, while we're talking. 
Do you know the angriest people in the world? Middle aged women. Eight out of ten are Muslim countries. Yeah. Why though? Because you're raised. I'm in Iran. Trust me, my friends and family, if you come to one of our parties, we look like we're angry half the time. We're just having a conversation. <laughs> For no reason. But, but I'll say 10 more seconds yeah. and I'll give it over to you. And I want to hear your thoughts on this. The point I'm trying to make right there, look at this. Angriest countries. and Go to the top so people can see the world's angriest countries. I, I think there's a simple explanation for that. By the way, if you look at this one, the third Ar one Armenia's makes a lot of Christian. sense. Armenia. Yeah. The third one makes a lot Armenia. of sense. Armenians, Azerbaijan, Turkey, yeah. the whole, you know, look who's above Armenia, yeah. by the way. Who's uh, angry at who? Armenia, Turkey. Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but this, this is the point I'm making to you. I think if... The way it's presented in the following way. Listen, Muslims, Islam. Listen, man, stop like acting like you guys are saints and innocent and your history is beautiful and perfect. Relax, bro. You know you got some dirt in your history. Fair. But but Everybody no, no, does. You're right. Christians, West, relax. Like, hey, we got eight hundred military bases in the world. We're in everyone's freaking business. Of course you're gonna piss people off. Yep. You wanna know about everyone's business, That's everyone's a fair divorce. Point. Leave my marriage alone. Of course you're going to create enemies. Okay. Now we have a mutual understanding and agreement. What do we agree on? Family values and principles. Why don't we unite here and all the other stuff? Guess what, Muslims? Do you know in every region in the world what religion has the most babies per women? Probably Islam. Islam, in of course. In every region in the world, except for one, South and Central America, every other region, number one is Muslims. Guess what, Christians? You ain't having enough babies. That's your problem. That's right. Go compete. Have more babies. Very These good. guys are doing 2.9, 4.9. Very good. I absolutely agree with this here. As I said previously, I sympathize with right-wing ideologies, with neo-nationalistic ideologies. And in those midst, people will always complain about the bad, bad foreigners creating so many babies, especially the Muslims. Oh, they're creating 10 kids. Look at them. Yeah, well, then create more babies. If you look at Germany, for example, they're creating, statistically speaking, 1.3 babies or so. People do not replicate anymore. In Christianity, it says, be fruitful and multiply. Christians do not obey that commandment at all. If you look at two people creating one child, you decimated yourself. If you create two children, congratulations, you're keeping your lineage alive. You need to create at least three children to multiply. Who is having three kids nowadays? Certainly not the Christians. 1.9, 2.1. Of course you're going to get your ass handed to you. Stop being so Correct. upset and go in the bedroom and make some damn babies. You're making Easy. enough of them. Yep. These are logical conversations where you can't be like, well, I don't want to compete against Muslims. No, they're kicking your ass. This is a you real conversation lose. of what are you doing? So again, that's my point on what I think we can do to kind of get the two to see a little bit more on what we're seeing and what weaknesses some Christians have on this as well. Your thoughts? Yeah, I don't want to go too deep theologically. I think there's a super simple reason why most Muslim countries have difficult or why they're so angry is because they don't embrace a simple market principle of charging interest. Is that if you do not have interest, you cannot. <laughs> that will make down. you happy. Now there's some workarounds around that, but <laughs> you're, you're going to remain permanently poor if you do not have a, a banking system that allows for entrepreneurial uh, activity. I would I imagine that all of us have taken out. That's labor. why the countries are poor. They're not poor because they've been bombed by the West. No, of Un course not. Usury. It's because Usury. of these Usury. Islamic yes, no, right? banks, <laughs> in, in this, in which was used to be outlawed in the Christian community. Yes. Thank you. Jews That's made correct. all the money. Yes. And exactly uh, right. Jews and he is a Jew. That's coming from a Jew. Very good point. Thank you. Explicitly actually prohibits it. Uh, but the rabbis found a workaround because they realized that flourishing and prosperity actually yes. comes with the ability to charge interest. Right. Flourishing I'm very pro interest because then you're allowed to bet on entrepreneurs and bet on people to buy homes. So I, I think that that's part of it, but not not the whole story. <laughs> I, I don't know how deep that's you want to get into this theologically, Patrick. There are some fundamental... Let's just sin now. <laughs> this will make us happy. <laughs> ...differences between worldviews of Muslims and Christians that I think need to be... I think out. the countries are not happy because they're not fornicating enough. Let's legalize fornication. But I will get back to... And I, I'm not that interested in that conversation. I'm just not. <laughs> so idiotic. What I'm more interested in is understanding that, that right now we are not living in a secular America. We're living in a place where the God of America has replaced it with trans zealotry, worship of the yeah, self. Yeah, but this is due to secularism, my friend. Widespread narcissism wow. and kind of a globalist ideal. Yeah. And so the question is, how do you then defeat that thing? And sometimes you have to make a- Yeah, by not having a secularized society. Prudent step that you might the not theocracy. be with to hmm. partner with a group of people that you do not see eye to eye on, theologically or otherwise- This is why Islam will win. coalition to win. Whether it be in World War II or other times, we as the United States have been willing to sometimes build coalitions yeah. with governments, people. And so 
again, I'm if if if, if a Muslim you know, imam was here, we'd have a lot of disagreements, right? Four major differences between Islam and Christianity off the top of my head. You know, I believe in the inerrancy of the the Bible. They believe in the Quran. They believe in the Prophet Muhammad. One of the reasons they they tend to be a violent people too is because their Prophet was a very violent person. Christ was oh, not wow. right. So there you go. Now it's not a stereotype anymore. Now all Muslims are violent people. They believe in a lot. Even the Muslim mom. Right. Nice. However, <laughs> the things we can agree on in American public policy is this: it's as simple as this. Let's just start here. It is impossible to be a devout Muslim and vote Democrat. It's impossible. How you as a Muslim could then say okay, you believe enough. in what the Quran teaches and what Allah commands of you, right? And also say it's okay to teach this grooming perversion. I, I, Elon Omar and Rashida Tlaib are sitting on some very, very fragile footing right there. And they're sure. only they're, and real they're able Muslims to do not Democrat see them as representatives of Islam. Or immigration or whatever their thing is. That's one element of it. More importantly, though, the most socially conservative people in America are Muslims. And I, I, I agree with you, Pat. It potentially could be some political upside for Republicans, but it's not going to be easy. What you just summarized, both sides giving a little bit. I know the conservative base well. There is there is a lot of skepticism oh towards. God. It makes no sense. To I, I'm not sure. saying it makes rational. I'm I saying I'm that. just I'm telling you the truth of yeah. what the base is saying okay. when it comes to Islam. Let me. All right, guys. This is it for today's video. Long enough as it is, I'm going to cut it off here one last time. If you are a Muslim, that's what you are. That's your identity. That's your identification. It comes before everything else, even before your race, your ethnicity, your nationality. Yes, because your race race is not coming to the grave with you. It is decaying flesh. We're not worshipping biology. We're not worshipping the creation. We are worshipping the creator as Muslims and this is what we are. Political choices, dietary choices, hobbies, what have you, all of it comes after Islam. And this is what I identify as wrong with America, with the West. Those people do not identify as Christians anymore or as Jewish people or what have you. They are identifying as Americans first. And now they're looking at their chessboard, so to speak, and they will have to decide which political party will lead them to salvation, which political party will be their personal savior. As Muslims, we do not believe in any of that, as I said already. Yes, Muslims would love to have Sharia. This is not a radical belief system whatsoever. As I said throughout the video, any truly religious person would love their society to obey the religious laws. If you look into certain sects of Buddhism, those people are vegetarian. Of course, they would love to have a vegetarian society because a Buddhist believes in Ahimsa. Ahimsa means reducing violence, abstaining from violence. And this is why they do not eat meat. They do not want to kill animals. And of course, they would love the whole society to stop eating animals. That is their ideology. Muslims believe that Islam is perfect. That's what we believe. We believe that the Sharia is perfect and this is what we want to obey. We do not want to obey man-made rules. But hey, before you get afraid, yes, as Muslims we do have to obey the law of the land. And this is why Muslims in America have to obey the law. It is simple as that. Muslims are not commanded to rebel against your law systems whatsoever. But you cannot confuse so-called Muslims that want to reform Islam with with true Muslims. As truly religious practitioners, we of course believe in our religion. Go figure. We believe, as I said, that our religion is perfect. Why would we then change it? And how would we change it in the first place? We wouldn't change it for something better. We would replace laws within Islam with liberal values, with values from the West. Why would any sane Muslim want that? Anyways, guys, the video is long enough. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.